Hey friends, it's Natalia and welcome back to She Makes 31. In today's video, I'm going to be decorating my kitchen and my dining room for fall. And I'm also going to be sharing with you a really delicious recipe. It's a pumpkin coffee cake and I've been making it for years and my family, everybody that has had it loves it. So I'm excited to share that with you. And I'm also going to be throwing in a couple of DIYs in there for you. So make sure that you stick around and at the very end, I'll show you how everything turned out. All right, friends, we're going to get started with our pumpkin coffee cake. And I will list the original recipe in the description box. The only thing that I did change is that I use spice cake mix instead of the yellow cake mix. But these are all ingredients that are like easily found in your pantry and very inexpensive to do. And it's really delicious. So you're going to start off with a third of a cup of water and then a can of pumpkin puree. Next, you're gonna put in two whole eggs. The eggs I used were large sized. You're also gonna add in two tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice. You could make this if you wanted to, um, but I bought it pre-made. And then one tablespoon of vanilla extract. You're gonna go ahead and mix all of these ingredients together. After mixing, you'll add in a teaspoon of baking soda. And then I got a regular size box of Betty Crocker spice cake mix. I just love the flavor that it adds to this. It just makes it more fall to me. And just your regular size box. It doesn't have to be 18 ounce or anything like that. And you just mix that in as well. I went ahead and got my 9 by 13 dish sprayed with some cooking spray and added the mix in. It is a thick mix, so you will have to spread it with your spatula. Now for the crumble topping, you're going to go ahead and add one half of a cup of flour and then a half a cup of brown sugar and melted butter, four tablespoons. And you're just gonna mix this. It's gonna create like a thick, thick mixture. And you can also work this with your fingers if it feels better to you, but just mix this. It's gonna be very crumbly. And this will be what you use to top the cake with. So it'll be really delicious. You're gonna go ahead and sprinkle your topping on your cake and you can put as much or as little as you'd like. I didn't use the whole thing, but feel free to do so if you'd like. And you'll bake this for about 25 to 30 minutes at 350 degrees. So doing the dishes is not one of my favorite chores, but I got this Mrs. Meyers apple cider dish soap and the cleaner and a brand new hand soap from Bath and Body Works. And it just gave me a good excuse to do the dishes because I have to convince myself to do them. So I thought, you know, I have this yummy smelling dish soap. So let me go ahead and clean up all the stuff that I use to make this cake. So while you have your cake in the oven, you're gonna go ahead and make this brown sugar glaze with a half a cup of brown sugar and a quarter cup of white sugar and some vanilla. You're also gonna put in some heavy whipping cream. It's a quarter cup and you're just gonna mix this. I had it on pretty high heat, medium high heat and just whisk it as um, it heats up it kind of becomes very liquidy and you want it to come to like a simmer just like you see here after it comes to a simmer you will turn down the heat remove it from the heat 
let it cool down a bit and then after your cake is out of the oven you're gonna go ahead and pour this on top Once your cake is out of the oven, you want to poke holes on the top so that the glaze will kind of seep through and moisten your cake. I mean, how good does this look, guys? It is amazing. This glaze is everything. So again, you could put in as little or as much as you'd like. I use the whole thing because I just love this glaze. It tastes so good and it makes it nice and just soft and moist. So you can eat this warm if you'd like, but I let it set overnight. I just love the glaze seeping through the cake and it makes it really, really good. So the next morning I made myself a cup of hot coffee. I usually drink iced coffee, but I thought that the hot coffee went really well with this coffee cake. And it was amazing guys. It was just so good. It was a great breakfast. You can eat this for breakfast or as a dessert with some ice cream if you'd like. It's just all together good. So you can't see it on camera so much, but my counters needed a good wipe down, so I used my cleaner from Mrs. Myers. Again, another excuse to just clean and make everything smell nice and fresh. All right, guys, it is the next day, and I have all of the decor that I may or may not use. I'm just putting it all out there in case I need it. Um, so I can start with my kitchen. And then after I do my kitchen, I'm gonna do this tier tray right here. I think I'm gonna leave it right here on this counter. And yeah, that's what I have to work with. So the first area I decided to decorate is this space here above some of my kitchen cabinets. I had some decor that I had up there and I just wanted to add into it. I wasn't going to remove what I had already there except for this garland, but I just added to the existing decor. So I got this garland at Joanne's Fabrics and I got it on super, super sale. And the pumpkins that you see here are from the Target Bullseye Spot. I use them a lot this year throughout the whole house. One of my favorite pieces to always buy from the Target Bullseye section are any kind of risers. So they're like these little pedestals and I just love them because sometimes when you need to add some height to something to make it visible like it was in this case, I can use these little risers and they are adorable and very neutral in their colors and everything so they match with your decor year long we got nothing to be scared of i'd rather be with you than by myself not always in your head Are you guys enjoying this video? If so, hit that thumbs up button. That would really help me out. And you can also share this video with any friends or family that may be interested in getting some ideas for decorating. I got this garland last year at Target Bullseye and they have some similar ones this year at Walmart. And then my favorite little starry lights, these little pumpkin lights I got at the Target Bullseye section and I got another set this time for my kitchen and I added them to the garland 
And again, another way to convince myself to do the dishes, right? <laughs> I put this um, little lights here and it just gives it such a sweet little ambiance. And it's just something nice to look at while you're doing the dishes. Next, we're jumping into a DIY here. This is a metal hoop wreath that I made for the first time. I got this um, hoop at the Target Bullseye section. Surprise, surprise, it was only $3. Um, they also have these at Michael's and just Walmart, I believe, has them as well. But um, I got these little pumpkins here at Hobby Lobby and they have like a wire stem. So that really helped in putting these around the hoop. So you just wrap them around, twist it, and place it where you'd like. So a little fun fact here, my very first YouTube video was actually a fall wreath tutorial. So if you've been following me since then, let me know in the comments. And if not, just go ahead and take a look at that video. It's still very useful and it's still the way that I make my traditional wreaths. But I thought this time I'd try this metal hoop because I just love the look. Here I got this greenery at Hobby Lobby and you just want to place it where, you know, just play around with the placement and where you want it. And then you flip it around. I use some floral wire that I got at the Dollar Tree to wrap and secure all of these little stems. I went ahead and hung this on my pantry door and I use a little leather strap to just wrap it around the slats on the door. So I have these like cute little shelves above the microwave that's above my stove. And I just love being able to decorate these. I put my cookbooks in there and I was just trying to prepare some decor to put up here. I got these beautiful little glass cloches from Amazon and I'll link those in the description box along with everything else that I'm able to link for you guys. You can also follow me in the Like to Know It app where you will find a lot of my home decor favorites and just things that I recommend to you know use around the house, you know, whether it be a cleaning product or something for the kids you can find that all there in the like to know it app A hard time finding kitchen towels this year that I loved but I was able to find these at TJ Maxx I believe they were only six dollars for a pack of three and I thought the colors were perfect for all the decor that I've been using in my house I'm so excited to share this next DIY with you it's a fall wood sign I got a piece of wood left over from Home Depot it's a 12 by 24 and I got some white chalk paint and just painted my board. I believe I used one coat and just touched up with a second coat a little bit in areas that needed it. And then I used my Cricut and I created this stencil that says pumpkin pies served fresh daily. I thought it was so cute to put this in my kitchen. I used contact paper to create the stencil and so I weeded it out as you see here. I 
After I weeded it out, I went ahead and put some transfer tape on top of it, which is the one that you see here that's a red and white grid paper. And then you peel the backing off of the contact paper. And this is my stencil and I'm just gonna center it and put it on my board. I did mark the middle of my board and I knew exactly where I wanted it. So I went ahead and laid it out, smoothed out any air bubbles, you can use like a credit card or something like that to also smooth it out. And then carefully, carefully peel the transfer tape off. So in the last video, I showed you guys how I made a sign for my living room, but um, I didn't use paint for that one, I used vinyl. But for this, I wanted to go for a specific like grungy letter look that I knew I couldn't get with vinyl. So I wanted to use paint for this. Um, in order to help prevent like bleed through, um, through the paint and the transfer, or I'm sorry, the contact paper, I went ahead and used some Mod Podge. So with a little sponge brush, I just applied a very thin coat of Mod Podge, let it dry. And then I used a bath sponge that I got at um, Walmart and some black chalk paint and you're just gonna sponge paint this on if you want this grungy letter look i didn't want like a solid letter look so i went ahead and um, would rotate my sponge and use different areas of my sponge heavier on some spots and lighter on others and you'll see when i show a close-up um, i just wanted a kind of grungy retro like worn look to this so i think it came out perfect Right now here she is I got some furring strips for the frame and I cut those with a handsaw and I just nailed them to the sides of the wood and that created my frame it's very simple you just cut it to size um, and then you just nail it with some finishing nails I found this pumpkin spice latte recipe sign at Hobby Lobby and I thought it would be so cute to hang it right here next to my coffee maker. And I got these little spoons for sugar and those are from Amazon. And I just love being able to have this little coffee nook area with this little sign here, pumpkin spice and everything nice. I got that a couple years ago at the Target dollar spot. And here in this corner, I made a little house for my Alexa. Isn't it cute? <laughs> but it's just a little basket. And I have a cake dome here, which I didn't use um, for this recipe because my cake was rectangular. But um, I know that I like to bake during this season. And so I'm sure I'll have cookies and muffins and all sorts of goodies in there throughout the season. But I just love being able to decorate this area of my kitchen as well. And here I moved on to my tiered tray. This tiered tray is from Kirkland's and I love it. And so I went ahead and got a lot of this stuff from the Target bullseye section. The pumpkins there that you see, the three that are on each tier are from Hobby Lobby. And these little measuring cups were so adorable. They have a beautiful pattern on them. I went ahead and got like a little bit of layering in between and scrunched it up. I used tissue and that way it gives gives it more dimension. And so I stack them up that way and just at the end add a few picks of greenery and a few little velvet pumpkins. Now here is that matching wreath that I talked about earlier with the garland. 
I got this also at Joann's, super, super inexpensive compared to other wreaths. And of course, I love this beautiful window pane that is from Kirkland's. I'm gonna go ahead and hang this up on my dining room wall. When it comes to hanging stuff, I'm like super particular about making sure it's centered and leveled. And so my husband is so helpful. He was holding up the frame here and I used some push pins to hang this up because it's light enough that I can do that. And it holds up really well and it doesn't make like big, huge like holes on my wall. And here's my very well-loved dining room table. I know guys, I've been talking about it forever that I wanna redo this table. And I know it's coming, it's coming, I know it is. Um, I'll be doing this soon within at least, you know, I hope by the end of the year. But for now, I will cover it up with a tablecloth. But I got this table runner at Marshall's and so I'm gonna cover this up. I'm not hosting Thanksgiving this year, but it's still nice to have this here if I want to have someone over for coffee or something like that or even dinner we can just cover this up but when it's just me and the kids and my husband we just leave it without the tablecloth but this table runner is perfect I love the color this burnt orange is just totally my jam this year I wanted to keep this really simple in the center just because this is a table that we use for everything. It's our dining table for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and um, just gave it a simple look. All right, guys, here is the final look. Let me know what you think. All right, guys, that is it for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you got some inspiration from this video, make sure that you let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. 
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!